Today I'm going to show you how to dial in a gnarly metal bass tone using only stock plugins. Thal, Gent, Methcore, Deathcore, Hardcore, Metalcore, Metal. Works for all of them. Maybe not as much Methcore, but we'll see. So my DAW of choice is Ableton. We're gonna just real quick add an amp, add a cab, and then add a pedal. I'm sure every DAW has this kind of stock setup. Just dial in, get it to bass, bass cabinet. And already we're closer. You can see it's not the greatest tone. I like the dynamic mic. I really have to lower this volume. So that's pretty good. Let's put the pedal in. Since we're using stock plugins, we have to do a little bit more work. So we're gonna have to separate this bass and create two different bass tracks. So one is just gonna be our low end and one's gonna be like our high jangle. Real quick, I'm just gonna add an EQ and a limiter. And you'll see why in just a moment. So now I'll just duplicate that before I go any further. And basically I'm gonna roll off all of the high end and it's just gonna be our sub bass. This little high cut right there. My frequencies that I'm gonna choose for my low end might be slightly different than what you're gonna use for your song, depending on the bass you're using and depending on the tuning. So now I'm gonna use the limiter to kind of squash the bass down and make it less dynamic. That way we have a wall of low end for this bass track. So I'm going to drop the ceiling until I start getting some compression going, or some limiting, I mean. So now we can see it's going. We want to make sure we're not in auto. And we want to make sure that our release is long enough so that it doesn't distort. If it's too quick, it's going to distort. What I like to do with this bass jangle track is to put the EQ at the front and cut all of our low end before it even hits our pedal or our amp or anything. So let's find a sweet spot. I'm going to turn this right here into a low cut. And that's pretty good, the two of them. What a lot of people like to do is to make their bass fairly distorted, so I wouldn't actually distort the low end track, I would do it on this like jangle track. And then same thing, let's just limit the hell out of this. So that's sounding pretty good. I'm just gonna throw some rough plugins I know I'm gonna use. So real quick, I'm gonna put another EQ on this bass group. I have the low end bass here, the bass jangle, and they're all routed to the same bass group. So you'll notice that we can put the jangle track really low in the mix and it still cuts through. Minus 17. That's feeling pretty good. So I love to put my EQ before my compressor because I like to EQ all the problem frequencies out before I do compression. That way I'm compressing the things that I want instead of compressing it and then trying to solve those issues after. So real quick, I'm just gonna squash the bass even more because the bass really, here's the thing, rant time. So here's the thing with guitar and bass, a lot of people think that they're like separate instruments and of course they technically are separate instruments, but when you're mixing it, you wanna treat them as one instrument. The bass can be doing different things and it, depending on what genre of metal you're doing, if the bass is like really flashy, maybe you'll do your own thing. But in general, especially with this kind of metal, Treat them like they're one instrument. Now let's compress the bass, and basically I want to make it more of a wall of sound. I 
Cool, now I'm gonna throw it into the full mix and let's listen to how it matches up with the guitars and with the drums. That's already setting really good for me. So what I really like from my bass, and you may have noticed other engineers say this before, but you don't necessarily want to completely hear it. You want to just feel it so that when you take it out of the mix, you're like, wow, it's, it's actually doing that much. So it needs a little bit of work. There's usually a frequency in the low mids with bass that's kind of cutting into our guitar territory. So that's why I have this EQ first. I'm finding around 202 hertz is where there's some gunk in there and when I remove it, it doesn't sound like the bass is getting lower, it just kind of sounds like the guitars are getting louder. A lot of mixing is sacrificing and just removing elements to make other elements pop. I'm also going to push the bass a little bit more. One issue you may run into, I don't know if I'm gonna run into it right now, is that when we split off the bass signals like this, we might make them out of phase. Let's turn on a plugin that has a phase flip. When your instruments are out of phase, they sound strange and they also lose a lot of the low end characteristics. So we'll hear it a lot in the bass. If it's an issue, it'll pop out right away. I'm just gonna loop a really short section just to make sure that we're good. seems like we're good. So now's the point where I'll check other references just to see where my bass is sitting. So I'm just gonna put my headphones on real quick. After referencing my headphones, I notice right up here around 3K. Just too much, so I'm just gonna remove quite a bit. The guitars have the same issue. Way clearer once that is gone. And again, what I like to do, I'm using a different plugin for this. It's all in guitars, it's not on the bass. What I like to do is to make a really fine cue, basically how wide or narrow this is. Kind of just scan and see where the issue disappears and where it comes back. I kind of just hear it right away. I, I don't notice when it's there, but then as soon as it's gone and then it comes back, it's very obvious to tell there's an issue. Same thing with the bass, that's basically what I did. Cool, so I hope that was helpful. Like I said, it's one of those situations where gear kind of does matter. These plugins sound okay and I can get to where I need to get, but I have to do a lot more work. It is what it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you found any use in this video, let me know down below in some way. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. See you next time. I know I look like a guy who owns an unsuccessful chain of pizza restaurants in the Caribbean. I don't.